A custom GPT is a great way to make AI much, much more useful. Uh, it has three main benefits. One is you can create a multi-step process that goes through a longer function instead of just making single one-off prompts. Another is that you can very easily save it and go back to it and use it again and again. The third benefit is awesome as well. You can actually share it with a simple, with a simple link with anyone else on your team, with anyone anywhere. You can put it in the marketplace. So custom GPTs have a big value. Uh, and I'm going to show you how to make one now. But I want to start by suggesting that there's really two kinds of custom GPTs. One of them is to make things, create a deliverable, write something together. And for that, you're probably going to go into Canvas mode, which turns uh, ChatGPT into kind of a word processor, uh, where the chat's on one side and, the, and the, the deliverable's on the other. The other is an analyzer GPT, maker GPTs and analyzer GPTs. An analyzer is going to be something that's going to audit a piece you made or evaluate something you're, you're working on, right? It's going to like a... Uh, it's going to see something and find gaps or look for improvements or to optimize something. I'm going to make right now for you a custom GPT that does brand comparisons, competitive analysis. Uh, I actually already made this and I recorded myself doing it. It was about an hour and a half or so of process, but I sped up that video and we're going to go through a speed run of that right now where you can watch me take every step in that process and see exactly how I made a high-performing custom GPT that does competitive analysis uh, and brand comparisons. Okay, here we go. Here we are. We're inside ChatGPT. I'm going to, uh, to to walk you through this now. First step in the left side, just go to Explore GPTs. You'll need a ChatGPT Plus account for this. That'll give you the, the Create button in the top right. Now, when you're inside here, there's a create tab that will walk you through every step of the way, but I'm going to go through a more robust process to create this. So I'm going to stay in the configure tab. Now we're just going to give it a name and we're going to give it a description. Now this description, I think probably it could help me write. Uh, so I'm going to actually copy and paste that into a new window in a new tab where I ask it to kind of uh, help me write the basic instructions, which it did. Right away, it gave me the idea to talk about brand positioning. So I actually updated the name from that. Now, I'm going to create two Google Docs in a Google folder. That's what's happening on the right side here. I'm in Google Drive or any kind of place where you do word processing or share things. And I'm going to make a folder. And in the folder, I'm going to put two files. One is for the instructions that kind of set users' expectations, talk to the user, and invoke the prompts. The prompts will be in a separate file. Now, the problem in, chat, in custom GPTs is that that instructions box only holds 8,000 characters. So I've got uh, the prompts in a separate file, and you'll see how I connect that later. Um, but the, the instructions are basically going step by step. So now you can see here I'm writing the very first step. So these instructions are going to tell the visitor what step they're on. They're going to set expectations. They're going to keep the process flowing, and they're going to invoke the prompts. So here I have step one, tell the user where they are, what they're doing, where we are in this process. Ask the user to share a persona. We have to get the persona in there first. Uh, tell them if they don't have the persona, run the persona prompt. Now I'm going to create a second file where I put in this persona prompt and I'm going to have it um, uh, uh, keep all my prompts separately in a file that I'm in the, in the end going to call prompt index. It's going to be a PDF that I'll upload to the chat GPT. So this one's just called, you know, uh, competitive analysis prompts. Okay, I'm going to start from a prompt that I have in my shared prompt library. I'm going to adapt it here a little bit. Uh, this is just a basic persona prompt that asks like, what is this person's hopes and dreams, their fears and concerns, their decision criteria? I need to know these things because to do good competitive analysis, I need to see it through the eyes of our visitor, of our, of our target audience. Now, I'm not just going to write this prompt. I want to give it back to AI here in that second window. I've got two tabs going. The other one here, I'm going to ask it to improve my prompt for structure and clarity. So there, I there is a better prompt that I could have written, much more structured, very detailed. Now I'm going to use that in my, uh, move that into the, the prompt document. Uh, next, I'm going to take my instructions. I'm going to give those to ChatGPT, ask it to improve those, move those back into my instructions document. So for version control, to keep it organized, I've got these things in separate Google Docs, and only after I have edited them and iterated based on input from AI will I move them into the custom GPT. It's going to keep it organized. It's a kind of version control. I can know what I'm doing. So having these things as separate files will be very useful to me. Now I'm writing the next step in the process. You're on step, tell the user you're on step two of X. Ask the user what the what competitors we want to compare this to uh, and just to get their input and, and remind them that if they don't have, uh, uh, you know, ideas, we'll do it for them. You see how I then took that entire instruction and copied and pasted it into that big instruction window. Then I write the prompt for that step, save that as a PDF, upload that into the, the knowledge, 
So now ChatGPT has the instructions and it has that all the prompts in the knowledge in a separate prompt index, a separate file. Now I'm testing it. I give it a brand. It comes back. It creates a mini persona. It, it, uh, it asked me to choose some competitors. Uh, it, I, I chose a couple. It suggested some for me. Now it's choosing the competitors. Now it's offering to go to step three. So I'm writing step three, the next set in the instructions. So it's like building software. It's going through a series of functions. You could say there's the instructions are like commands, the prompts are like functions, and it's going through this multi-step process. In this case, first defining the persona, at least at a high level, then picking the competitors to compare us to, at least at a high level, you can give it to them, or I built it so that it's gonna pick some for you. Uh, and then in each case, I take the, the related prompts and the instructions, and I go back to AI in a separate tab to have it make those recommendations. Right now it's gonna run the positioning analysis prompt. So I give this positioning analysis prompt and I put it all in there. I'm going to have it invoke that. And this time, uh, I'm actually still, again, iterating, iterating, uh, copy all the instructions in, copy, the, uh, make the personas into a PDF, upload those prompts again. So it's all, you know, make a draft, ChatGPT revises it, uh, put it in the Google Doc, and then move it into the, move it into the edit. See, I'm going back into edit mode, copy and paste in. It's got brand new instructions. Go to the prompts, export the prompts as a PDF file, go back to the custom GPT, upload that file as the new prompt index. So now it has new prompt index. I increment, I'm keeping track of the versions. This is still my first version, I'm in version one. So now I go back and I'm gonna test it again. I'm gonna pick another brand. Let's pick this one. It's a C, some kind of uh, C, on deep sea services, but probably for like oil and gas or something. So I, I give it that prompt. It comes back, I'm gonna actually have it tested. It comes back, it identifies competitors, it says pick a couple of these competitors. It, I pick some competitors and it compares them. Pretty good. So I, I sort of like this, uh, I sort of, but it's not enough. The left column there is supposed to be the information needs of my persona. Then the right columns are the different brands and how well these brands satisfy the information needs of the persona. But the problem was it didn't have enough of them. I wanted to give me more. I wanted to list all the persona's information needs according to you know the, this, the previous step. So I'm back, I, it, I edit the prompt upload the new prompt, I'm back in the custom GPT in preview mode, testing it again. Back and forth testing, wait, what? All of these are the same. There's no difference between them. That's a problem. I take a screenshot of this next, then I give it to ChatGPT and I said, what the heck? These are all the same, how do we get it to highlight the differences? Then it rewrites the prompt itself to better highlight the differences. So then I come back in, copy and paste in its revised prompt, save that as a PDF file, Upload that to ChatGPT or to my custom uh, custom GPT as a new one. So you're like kind of overwriting and replacing and editing and then overwriting and testing. It's this back and forth, this really long iterative process. You can imagine why this took, you know, uh, these could take a couple hours to build. But in the end, uh, as you test it, it'll slowly narrow. And it's like if this was programming, you'd be debugging it. That's what you're doing. You know, they say English is the hot new programming language. So here again, I'm testing it again. Pick a couple brands. It I picks the brands, now up against the comparison. But it didn't make my table. I wanted it to rate the extent to which. It just kind of listed this kind of highlights. So I go back and I'm like, something's wrong with this. Why isn't it doing it right? You know, I, so I keep uploading the prompts and trying it again. In the end, I realized I was putting too much into that one prompt. The better answer there was to separate it into two separate prompts. So this multi-step process where I'd gone through three prompts, it turns out the third prompt had too much in it. It was doing the kind of initial analysis and trying to create my comparison table. So sometimes it wasn't creating the comparison table. So I'm asking it, why didn't it do that? How can I get it to revise that prompt so it completes that task? What it comes back with, it says, the solution is to make it two different steps. You can't overload a prompt, it sort of quits working. It only gives you so much processing power. Make a multi-step process, that's the whole point here, custom GPT, building it out so it goes through many different things. So here I am now, I'm actually testing it, trying to get it, I'm giving it an example. ChatGPT wrote a better prompt, it wrote double prompt, right? These are now multiple steps. I'm creating a, the instructions to invoke the prompt for the next step. So breaking this piece out, that function, those are now two separate functions. One is the initial analysis, one is the, the, the comparison table. Great, okay, so now I've got new instructions, edited by AI, revised for clarity and structure, copy and paste those, see, they, go, they just went into the instruction box. And then I take those two prompts, save that as a PDF. There it is. That's it. That's my prompt index. Save that, upload that to ChatGPT, testing it again. Step one of four, is this the brand? Good. Step two, uh, you know, the persona, identify the competitors. 
Here's the thing. So I'm actually uh, iterating the prompts here a bit more. I found an opportunity, gonna make it a little bit better. I want them to, and now actually there it's making the, uh, the table not too bad. I got it. This is mostly what I wanted. I wanted a table that compared my brand to these to a couple of other brands based on the prioritized information needs of my target audience, which generated from the persona, garbage in, garbage out. You got to validate every one of these steps. I did this very quickly as a testing exercise, but in a normal use of a custom GPT, I'd be iterating and testing and talking to it while it's working. Let's go ahead and give it a logo. Uh, I picked a logo. This is my brand. Uh, I know just enough Photoshop to kind of make a little thing. Okay, we've got, you know, it looks like a, a comparison tool, right? Good. Upload that. And the name, I don't know, like, I don't like this name. Let's think of a better name. I asked ChatGPT, comes up with this one here, Market Position Scan. I think a brand scanner. I like that name better. So I gave it the name Brand Scanner. This is it. Uh, I'm testing it now once more. I'm going to rip through again, just testing my own site. Uh, here I uploaded a, a persona because I already I have nice personas that are uh, fully approved. Gave it a couple of competitors. It's analyzing those competitors. Now it's showing the extent to which we, my site and their site satisfy the information needs of the competitor. That's it. We just built in 90 minutes in a speed run of 10 minutes here on this video, uh, a custom GPT going back and forth, creating instructions, creating prompts. The instructions go in the instruction box. The prompts get downloaded as a, as a PDF and uploaded as a prompt index, as an attached file into the knowledge section, uh, where every instruction, every prompt was iterated together with ChatGPT, and together they make a flow. It's almost like software, like it tells the user there are different steps. Very useful. So many different things you could do with this. So uh, the only limits are your imagination. Imagine all the things that, that you could get help with and how it could possibly help you do these things. And once it's saved, you can use it again and again. You can iterate it, you can fix it, you can keep improving it or adapting it for different use cases. But mostly you have like a new piece of software that does exactly what you wanted to do based on some of those powerful technology devised by humans to date. That was fun. Hope it's useful. Uh, feel free to pass this along to anyone if you think it's useful to them. Uh, sorry we rushed through it, but that's the whole idea is to show you the entire process. Andy from Orbit Media, uh, thanks and we'll see you next time.